What's up guys, Tao here. So a few days ago, I updated my motherboard BIOS to the latest version, uh, F15. Uh, my board was a Gigabyte Z370 uh, Gaming, uh, the first generation. It was running F11, so I decided to update the, uh, to F15. Uh, just thinking maybe I wanna you know, update the CPU to the ninth generation, cause the F11, I don't believe it support the ninth generation. So yeah, that's where everything went wrong. I couldn't boot, I, it doesn't matter what I do or it doesn't matter what I did, it would not work. So I did the research, uh, uh, turns out it's not just me, a lot of users have the same issue. Uh, in fact, um, this happened to a lot of the newer motherboard, Z370 and the 390 as well. So maybe um, for the Hackintosh community, it, it, maybe it's a good idea to embed this patch into the bootloader. So that will save a lot of hassle, save a lot of time for the user. In my case, instead of I fixing the actual bootloader or fixing the machine, I took the opportunity to freshly install uh, Mahovi 10.14.6 uh, with second supplement update. Now I hope this is the last update um, Apple will ever push out because the system now is so stable. Everything works um, for the past few days, there's no issue at all. I did experience a few issues with the old um, install. That's because I didn't really freshly install the system. I just keep changing, keep adding, so there's a lot of junk uh, in the system. So now actually the system is clean and it runs perfectly. Now this won't be a tutorial video. Uh, I just pinpoint a few key uh, elements uh, within the installation uh, of my system. So hopefully you guys out there who has the same processor, uh, same motherboard, uh, most important thing, the same motherboard, because that's where the key factor will uh, differ. In order to boot into the USB installer, it is very important that the patch uh, has to be applied, the ACPI patch. I will leave the article in the description so you guys can have a look. So these are very important for the USB installer, boot into the USB and install the uh, OS properly. For the post installation, I will show you guys my key uh, selection within the Multi Beast. For the audio, all I select is the Apple ACL and the motherboard is a 300 series audio support. And the optional three port, you can select five ports that will work. The disc, uh, third party and generic ones, and miscellaneous. Now, the fake ASA. Fake SMC is the must, you have to select that and I select plugging in as well. For the in for the Ethernet, I use the, uh, the the Apple Intel and the USB. Now this is where I did have issue with it, but now all I need is removed XHCI USB polymer and that's all I needed. So all the USB ports are working um, perfectly, including the USB 3.1, um, Clover UEFI mode plus the um, NVRAM. Customized my graphics. I'm using the AMD uh, Vega 64. So all I tick is this fix up aka whatever green. And this actually will install two drivers. Uh, apart from whatever green and will Lilu uh, we install Lilu as well. This is the two you will ever need. And SSD option that's for the old board. Now system definition is the probably the most important thing. Um, if you didn't select right, your system will, you know, function will not function uh, stably. So for me, I'm using the i7 8700K. Uh, eight, eight, sorry, 8700. So I'll be selecting the 19.2. Uh, whatever your system is, whatever your processor is, make sure you select the closest system definition uh, matching your processor. So that is quite important. And then this is my overall selection. Um, if you have the exact same board, um, you probably, probably it's a good idea to select the same thing uh, just to see how your system runs and from there you can tweak your uh, selection. Now, here is my uh, library and extension folder. Um, do, for my old system, I did have quite a few. Uh, that's why I decided for a brand new installation, just get rid of the junks. Now the system is quite clean and very, very stable. Now after you install the multi-beast, make sure you apply the same patch uh, to the config playlist uh, of your installed system. Uh, this is very important, otherwise after you restart, the system will not reboot. Uh, while here, these are all my uh, patches. 
So I have this. And now this actually is quite important for the uh, quick sync internal graphics card to work in junction with the Vega 64 and those two uh, now and also the boot I have a, a boot flag which is disabled GFX firmware uh, that's also is required now one of the things a lot of people struggle with the GPU uh, acceleration uh, in the Final Cut Pro is the graphics card. Now here I'm using the headless mode. Headless mode is essentially is leave the internal GPU uh, as blank. Uh, don't use it. So all you need is select the correct GPU ID. Now here I pull up the Intel Core i7-8700. So if you're not if you're not sure, uh, just go into the Intel website to see what is the device ID of your iGPU. For my instance, it is 3E92. So over here, you select 3E92. Now this is for the graphics 630, and yeah, that's that's pretty much done. Um, you don't really need to select anything else because the uh, Vega 64 actually is natively supported and also as long as the internal graphics card is enabled and then the quick sync it should be working as it should be the way to check it i normally use the where is it is the intel power gadget so if the quick sync or internal graphics card is enabled you will see a green uh, line it says gfx so this is where you will see the graphics card has been enabled or if you wish to there is a app uh, you can use here you can see give you all of the encodings h264 is supported uh, hevc is supported um, all of those things and actually tells me the build number is 18g95 which is after the second uh, supplement update this is the 10.14.6 all right that was quick run through of my uh, new system um, hopefully you guys find it useful especially for those of you who actually want to update your bios i would suggest you check before you actually update if your existing system running very very stable I don't think there's any need for you to update BIOS unless maybe you want to change the processor because in my instance the Z370 only supported 8th generation so I was thinking about maybe upgrading my processor hence the update hence the issue so yeah overall the system now is running perfectly everything runs smoothly as it should be um, especially the quick sync I did have a slight issue with the quick sync with the Vega 64 but now all the issue is gone so perform really really well all right this is the end of the video if you liked the video please click on the like and share with others so hopefully other people will get benefit out of this video as well and if you didn't like the video i mean you can just dislike it i'll be just right in the corner yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video see you in the next one